Hey, hello everybody, you're welcome back again to the Reggae Appreciation Society. The legendary Willis Trio is the most iconic group in the history of reggae music and is synonymous with Bob Marley, Bonnie Whaler and Peter Tosh. But what most people don't know is that the Whalers originally began with five members that also included Junior Braithwaite and the subject of today's video in the adorable Beverly Kelso who was the only female member of the group. Her powerful high-pitched voice was the secret weapon that launched the group into overnight superstardom courtesy of hit tracks like Simmer Down that would top the Jamaican charts for several weeks in 1964. It's fair to say that without her, the story of reggae music might have been very different. For one thing, she is credited with introducing Rita Marley to Coxon Dodd and Studio One, where she would begin a music career and eventual relationship with Bob Marley. And also, Beverly Kelso was Bob's number one confidant, and they were so close that she was the only whaler who knew about and was invited to Bob and Rita's wedding. However, several factors will see her leave the group after a fairly short period of time, and as such, her story is largely unknown such that when Bonnie Whaler passed in 2021, it was widely reported that she was the last Whaler. Her story has been terribly underreported, but I'm glad to say that she's finally getting her due recognition. Now without further ado, let's take a look at Beverly Kelso, the last of the Whalers. She was born April 14, 1948 in Kingston, Jamaica and discovered that she was blessed with an amazing voice while still a pupil at Denham Town Primary School. She had been wowing her classmates and friends with her gifts until the teacher accidentally overheard her sing and was blown away. The then newly crowned Queen Elizabeth was scheduled to visit Jamaica in a few days time and that teacher pulled a few strings for young Beverly to sing for the new monarch at a reception and her performance got a good reaction and round of applause from the royal. For years, her singing would only be limited to the church choir and her mother's house until she would accidentally go professional at the age of 14. One fine day in 1962, Beverly was at home when two of her schoolmates came over and suggested that she come with them to a popular spot in West Kingston called Chukumo Lawn. That place was owned by Edward Siaga, businessman and the eventual Prime Minister of Jamaica. That place was known in Kingston as the Ground Zero of Ska, a place where the likes of Jimmy Cliff and Marcia Griffiths would start their careers. After getting permission from her mom, Beverly and her friends got to Chukumo Lawn and she was given the chance to get on the microphone before the more established singers were ready to perform. She burst into a tune called Down the Aisle by US singer Patti LaBelle and in doing so, she almost caused a riot. Her amazing voice not only blew the audience away, but people lining up outside waiting to get in got so desperate to see who was singing that they broke down the wooden fence and rushed in to demand an encore. It was one incredible performance that stunned everyone watching and among the excited crowd, one of the people who had stormed the place that evening to see Beverly was none other than Bob Marley. A few days later, Beverly was at home doing her chores after school when she heard a knock at the gate and when she opened it, Bob was standing there and introduced himself. To her surprise, he had traced her to her house after her performance at Chokomo Lawn and told Beverly that he was a member of a vocal harmony quartet and wanted her to be the fifth member. He told her that they were getting ready to go on audition and wanted her to come and rehearse with them and she refused at first, saying that Bob had to come and get permission from her mother, thinking it would throw him off. But he was dead serious and waited for her mom to come back from work. After swearing to Beverly's mom that he would bring her back home every day after rehearsals, her mother agreed and she would join Bob, Bonnie, Peter and Junior Braithwaite every evening at the backyard at the home of Joe Higgs in Trenchtown where they would get music lessons and Joe Higgs would mold that group called the Whalers into a true musical unit ready for an audition in Jamaica's hottest studio. Alvin Siku Patterson, a percussionist, older friend and mentor of Bob's, was friendly with Coxon Dodd, the owner of Studio One and had told the producer about the Whalers. So one fine day, he sent them to Dodd to audition and they sang two songs for that producer which he didn't like but when they sang a song called Simmer Down, he was blown away and just knew that it was a hit. He told them to go back and prepare and come back in a few days to record it and when they did, it was put to wax and released in a matter of days. Simmer Down would instantly explode into a massive hit that went to number one on the Jamaican charts for several weeks and sold more than 80,000 copies, a humongous number in those times. Simmer Down had Bob on lead vocals with Bonnie, Peter, Junior and Beverly in sizzling form on background vocals. Beverly's high-pitched vocal range provided the perfect balance to the group's harmonies and would power them to become the hottest group in Jamaica. 
Cockton Dodd signed them up at Studio One and recorded other hits like Lonesome Feeling and It Hurts to Be Alone that was powered by Junior Braithwaite on lead vocals and also went up to number one. And Beverly was having the time of her life. She would go to school in the morning and after getting back home, doing her homework and household chores, the four guys would come by her mother's house and they would all stroll to Studio One to record in the evening. However, the five whalers would go down to four members just eight months after their debut when Junior Braithwaite left for the US in September 1964 to join his parents. The whalers were becoming very popular and they were often recognized in the streets and people would often stare at them in admiration on their daily walks to the studio. Beverly had noticed a particular young girl who always stood outside her gate and waved at them. The three guys always ignored her so Beverly one day chose to make a point by stopping to say hi. That girl's name was Alpharita Anderson. She told Beverly that she could sing and wanted to get into music. So that day, Beverly asked Coxton Dodd if Rita could come over and audition at the studio and Coxton Dodd said it was okay. So Beverly went back and told her to get ready and eventually Rita would come over to the studio with her two backup singers in her friend and schoolmate Marlene Gifford and her cousin Constantine Walker. They impressed Dodd a great deal and he took them on as Studio One and he imagined them in the mode of American female soul trios like the Supremes and they became known as the Solettes and it was while working at Studio One that Rita and Bob would start dating and eventually fall in love. Bob and Beverly became very close and she became his most trusted confidant. In 1965, Studio One would release the Wailers debut album titled The Wailing Wailers. The Wailers were hardly getting paid for all the records sold but Beverly was just happy to get the opportunity to sing. But later that year, her father, who was abroad, would send for her to come over and join him and she was devastated and when she told Bob, Bonnie and Peter just what was about to happen, they did all they could to convince her to stay and even put a song together called Donna that was a direct plea for her not to go. However, after recording more than 25 songs with the Wailers, Beverly would say goodbye to the music business. Her leaving the Wailers was a very big blow to that group but she remained very friendly with the trio, especially Bob Marley. And she and Bob were so close that when the tough gong was getting married to Rita, she was the only whaler that knew about it before it happened. Bob had invited her but she fell ill before that day and couldn't make it to the wedding. Peter and Bonnie who didn't know about the wedding would later confront Beverly when they found out that she was aware. Beverly Kelso totally left the music industry and would move to the US in December 1979. She got married to a doctor and raised her family quietly for years, largely forgotten by the world until she was tracked down by the press and she began to grant interviews around 2004. And in recent years, she's been slowly but steadily getting the recognition that she truly deserves as a founding member of the Whalers. And she's been the recipient of several awards and has been making appearances in a handful of reggae events, including the Westchester Reggae Festival in 2022, where she famously reunited with Marcia Griffiths after more than 50 years. She's currently writing a book about her time with the Whalers, and I personally can't wait to read it. And incidentally, it's going to be the first autobiography by an actual member of the legendary group. Beverly Kelso, the last surviving whaler, is getting her flowers while she's still with us. And I believe there's still a lot more to come. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, jobless.